everyone, uh, this is Samantha, and I am currently 12 weeks post-op from Dr. Suporn. So the reason why I wasn't updating over the past several months or so is because it's been a little bit more difficult for me as of late. I've been returning to work, I've been returning to advocacy, and a lot of things have kind of culminated together to make me incredibly busy and frankly quite exhausted. And that's one of the main things that actually worries me. Just to get straight to the point, a lot of people are probably going to want to know a little bit about um, how my dilation is going in and of itself, my physical therapy, but this video I think is going to be more specifically toward my mental state, as a lot of things are kind of changing for me. It's very, very odd and I'm not exactly sure what to think. So my dilation is going pretty fantastic. We've been down at two dilations per day. Three dilations per day is just not doable and like any way, shape, or form. It's pretty ridiculous because it takes about an hour to two hours for my partner and I to both dilate during the day. And doing that three times a day equals six hours worth of doing that, just sitting in our beds. And it's been a little bit of an issue compared to everything else that's been going on because I'm sleeping like a good 12 hours a day to recover from surgery. So with that, if we were doing it three times, I would be spending 16 hours of my day just laying in bed and I can't really do that. That doesn't seem very possible. So my partner and I have basically come to the conclusion that if you get this surgery, don't expect to have three times a day dilations consistently. It's not gonna happen. We've basically done with two dilations and if you can get a third in, by all means, go for it, do it. But past that, two dilations per day seems to be relatively okay for us. A lot of my other physical traits going on with surgery have been just a lot of itchiness as it recovers, as just any other surgery would. There's a lot of itching going on, and uh, past that, everything works pretty well. Feeling, on the other hand, is yet to kind of come forward. I've had a few nerves reconnect, which is rather painful, a very, very uncomfortable experience. You're basically feeling like a three-inch needle just sticking in and then just electrocuting yourself for like several minutes on end. And then it just feels really, really sore for a lot of hours. And there's apparently a lot of those that we have to recover. So I'm not really looking forward to that over the next several months. It's gonna take up to a year before it's actually fully healed. What I'd like to do is move on to the rest of the um, information. If you have any questions about dilation, toss them down there. I'm thinking about doing a uh, Q&A video. So if you have any important questions regarding surgery or anything like that, let me know and then I'll see about doing it. I'd like to go ahead and talk about my daily life now because you can tell four hours of dilation, sleeping 12 hours a day, a little bit on the difficult side. Um, I have returned to work. And for those of you who don't personally know me, I actually work in a call center. So I get to sit, I get to talk to people, everything's great, everything's awesome. But it's still very difficult. I get wiped out to the point where I can barely think about what I'm talking to this person on the other end of the phone about when I hit the end of my shift. And I'm only working four hours. So even 12 weeks post-op, it's very difficult for me to run that. Um, simultaneously, I feel like I'm overdoing a lot because throughout the week, I'll just get more and more and more tired and I'll end up sleeping more and more and more into the day. Um, a few days ago, I actually woke up at 2.30 in the afternoon, had to get to work like by 4, and I had to fix dilation inside that, so definitely didn't work out very well. Uh, one of the things that I do suggest is knowing how far you can go at any point in time, especially when it does come to work and advocacy and schoolwork, stuff like that. Um, I have found that on any given day, I can do two hours worth of Trans Youth Channel, I can do maybe an hour or so of local advocacy, such as Transgender Day of Remembrance, which I'm planning on the 22nd. If you're in Northern Colorado, definitely find me on Facebook, Samantha Venia Logan, and I will go ahead and join you to the group. Either way, shameless plug there, we can forget about that. My downtime, as it turns out, I don't get very much of it. So I've been having a lot of trouble getting out, seeing a lot of friends, and having the motivation to do so. So because my social life has kind of plummeted, so to speak, I've had to fight a lot with depression. I've had to fight a lot with actually getting out there and always tired. I don't have that motivation. So I get very, very depressed. So I've had to actually spend a lot of my time that I would spend on advocacy, actually going out, hanging out with friends, 
The solution that my partner and I have come up with, however, is basically reserving an entire night after or before work to just have social interaction. So we're basically having a game night at home and so far it seems to be panning out, seems to be working pretty well, um, but we'll see here in the next several months, I guess. It's Transgender Day of Remembrance is actually today. It's National Transgender Day of Remembrance. So I do just want to encourage everyone watching this video, if you haven't already, definitely look to see if there's any events going on throughout the week in your area. Here we actually have it on the 22nd. Some places may actually be having it on the 23rd. So if you really want to know, I'll link a GLAAD description in the bar um, talking about Transgender Day of Remembrance, and it'll have a list of events, so you might be able to find one in your area. For those of you who don't know what it is, TDOR is one of the biggest events for the trans community. It's actually one of our only events other than TDOV, Transgender Day of Visibility, about six months later. So this is the event where we basically mourn a lot of the people who have died and celebrate their lives because they came out in a place where it was fatal to do so and a lot of them have actually lost their lives due to it. 238 people on this particular list. So I just want to send my heart out to those families, say thank you very much for the work that you're doing to make that name known and get those policies changed. It's a huge deal. It's a community effort and it comes in every single area, standing up for your trans friends or your allies versus just changing policies up at the government level. And I've seen a lot of people do that. So thank you to everyone. My heart goes out to those who have lost their loved ones on Transgender Day of Remembrance. And thank you guys. I look forward to seeing you soon.